Good evening. Welcome to Belshire Assembly of God Wednesday night service. We appreciate you that have made it out tonight. And it's, uh, weather's so nice out there. I'm sure it was hard to go ahead and get in the car and get down here, but we appreciate the ones that, that made it and you that are watching by Facebook Live tonight. Thank you for joining us. And we are praying that God will speak to your heart and minister to you tonight as we uh, continue in. Uh, this is Pentecost week. We're just taking from Sunday being Pentecost Sunday on through the week. Now, part of that is uh, us preachers, we have two Holy Ghost. We got the Holy Ghost as part of the Trinity, and then we got one that sounds a whole lot like our wives. And so, <laughs> so Monday we were talking about uh, what God would have us for, and uh, the one that sounds a whole lot like my wife said, uh, we probably just need to go ahead and continue on with the uh, Pentecost theme and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I said, well, that sounds like that could be from God. So we're, we're going to do that. So we, uh, if you've never received the baptism, if you've got some questions about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, this is your place to be tonight. And so thank you for joining us. Uh, several announcements before we go to the prayer and get started. Um, let's see if I can read uh, Pastor Andrew's writing here. VBS is going to be June 7th through 10th. And if you want to help see Pastor Andrew after church tonight and volunteer for that, um, VBS is always uh, just a great around. It's just they go all out for it. And um, I forget what's the uh, Prince Dance a lot or somebody's going to be the, the, the head guy here. So we won't be, you want to be a part of that. But June 7th through 10th for VBS. And youth camp. Uh, the, your money needs to be here before you leave tonight. So if you're watching and your kid's going to youth camp, you need to get in the car and get over here. We'll be through at 8 o'clock, and so you need to be here at 8 o'clock with your money uh, because if you want your kids to go to youth camp, that money's got to be in. Uh, and there's still room at the kids' camp available, so if you've got uh, a young person that you'd like to go to kids' camp, uh, trust me. It's well worth the spiritual time for your kids to go to youth camp and to go to kids camp. It's not a babysitting service for a week. They have church, and I like what Pastor Andrew says. There's no such thing as a junior Holy Ghost. And what they'll get there is exactly what we try to get across to you out here. And it's the same God, same Holy Spirit. So we want our kids in youth and kids camp. Um, Sunday morning, uh, service at 10 o'clock. And also want to remind you, June 27th, Sunday morning, there's going to be after church, there's going to be a fundraiser for the uh, fine arts. We've got four of our young people that are going to uh, the fine arts in uh, Orlando this year. And um, there was the parents of two of them that are really getting excited. To, but um, but the. I was thinking, when I was thinking today about making this announcement, because what's going to be is a spaghetti dinner. Uh, the pastor said Sunday, we're the only place we know that gets you to bring the food, and then we charge you to eat the food. So uh, that's how we work and roll around here at Belshire. But uh, it's going to be a spaghetti dinner, and if you can make good spaghetti, we want you to make some. See, get hold of Sister Martha. Uh, let her know that you're going to be doing that, or bread and and then you that know how to make desserts, we want you to make your desserts because after the dinner, we're going to have a dessert auction. And uh, if you've never been here for one of our auctions, especially the dessert auctions, um, banana pudding go for $100, $150. And especially if it's Miss Martha's banana pudding, that's going to send the price up even more. But uh, it, it's fun. It's a fun time to come. And so... You say, well, I can't stay on a Sunday to eat lunch. Well, drop your money off and leave. <laughs> hey, I, I say that, but I don't say it in jest because there's been times that Jeannie and I have done that exact same thing. We couldn't stay around for the lunch, but we wanted to be a part of whatever it was, the fundraiser. And so we took our offering by and then left. So you can do that. Or they'll have some to-go boxes. So you can do that too. But if you go, you won't be here for the, the auction and then... Enough said. Be here. Amen. That's June 27th. All right. Um, 
several things. Uh, I don't have, didn't get all the prayer list, but I know that uh, Deidre and the prayer team met before church and had prayer tonight, intercessory prayer. Uh, if you want to be on that prayer list, or you can see her and get your request on there. And if you want to pray, if you want to be part of the prayer team, I'm sure that she would love to add more every day of people that we know that are praying and seeking God for the needs of those that look to Belshire Assembly as a spiritual source for us to touch God for them. So uh, join the prayer team. And also, uh, if you got a need, we have people that pray. We have people that pray. So, and that's what we're going to do now. Uh, our pastor's away for a few days of retreat, and so we want to pray for him. Uh, we just have been praying all week that God just minister to him, give him rest in his body, in his spirit, and in his mind. There's, uh, he's had a, a kind of a rough couple of weeks and a lot of things, and um, some of it's none of your business, and some of it you might know about. But, <clears throat> you know, we forget sometimes that the man or the woman that stands here they stand here as flesh and blood. And things that affect you, things that hurt you, things that um, get on the wrong side of you, they get on us. They hurt us. Our feelings get hurt. And things affect us. But then we've got to put that aside and stand up here and be used of the Holy Spirit when we're in this, this place. So it's our job to lift up our pastors in prayer. And, um, and it's especially right now, and, and God, I think it's great timing that this retreat came along, that he and Brother Bailey were to go, able to go to that. And so continue to pray for him this week that God would minister um, to everything he needs. And he will come back on fire, and we'll just have to run to catch up to him. Amen? Let's stand as we go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we're praying, uh, continue to pray for uh, Sharky that uh, I was talking to Brother Ronnie Sunday she's just she's been given up on four or five times over the last year and, and uh, she said I ain't done yet and God ain't done with me yet and so uh, <laughs> y'all can report what you want to but I ain't leaving here and so, but, but there's still some issues in her, her body that we need God to, to finish up the healing he's already started some healing but uh, God the word says he does all things well. Amen. And so I believe when healing comes, it can come and should come as total, complete healing. Amen. And so we're believing that. And there's others. And as I've said a hundred times here before, if you don't have anything to pray about, open your Facebook. And before you scroll down through five, you've got at least three prayer requests that you can go to God about. And a couple of them might be God deliver them. But, uh, <laughs> but there's plenty of those on there too, amen. Father, we are so thankful tonight. Mm. That we can call you Father. God, I thank you tonight. That in this moment, I can sense the reality of a holy God through the Holy Spirit anointing and Filling the atmosphere of this place. Lord, we look at a Wednesday night and say, well, it's just Wednesday night, a small crowd. But God, your word said if two or three of us would come in your name, you'd be in the midst. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We make place for you, Holy Spirit. We open our spirit to receive from you, Holy Spirit, and have your way tonight. And these needs that have been prayed about already by the prayer team and we continue to pray for them and lift them before you. Lord, we pray for our pastor. Give him rest in his spirit, in his mind, in his body during this time away. And when he comes home, he'll be uh, ready and fresh and a new, a new vision, new anointing, and a new fire in his spirit to go forth and see the great things you're going to do as you bring revival. Not just the Belshire Assembly, but God, I believe Church Universal is getting ready to see a Holy Ghost revival. And so we pray now, Lord, that you'd anoint this your vessel. Touch us tonight. Lord, that you would bypass my mind and let my spirit speak forth That's that you've laid on my heart and have your way now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. 
you're going to show some things that distinct that are make you distinctive from other people because the New Testament church was a Pentecostal church. It was a church that believed after salvation there's a work that the Holy Ghost would do in your life. We would come and set up residence in you called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And with that comes the evidence of speaking in tongues. I say baptizing the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues is one phrase for me. Because everywhere in the scripture where it talks about people being baptized in the Holy Ghost, it said, and they spoke with other tongues. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, you know, one time in the scripture is good enough for me. But when every time something's mentioned, it's like that, then that's a pretty good sign to me that God intends it to be this way. Yes. Now, understand, I understand people say, well, you know, there's other gifts, and there are, and we'll talk about some, and probably not get into them tonight, but there's time coming in, hopefully over the next several weeks and months, we're going to spend more time, pastor's going to spend more time, in times I'll get to preach, I'm going to spend more time talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Spirit. If we are a Pentecostal church, a New Testament church, we're going to lead people from salvation to being baptized in the Holy Ghost with evidence speaking in tongues, and then those nine gifts begin to be in operation. See, God never intended for the gift of tongues to be the only thing we just walk around talking in tongues all the time. He said, I've got these other. Now, see, and the gift of tongues in the nine gifts is not the gift in Acts chapter 2. That is the evidence of the receiving of the Holy Spirit. But then there is a gift of tongues that comes along with the other eight. So there's nine. But you then will be operating in those gifts. Had a dear friend of mine who's gone to heaven now, uh, Dr. Bill Brand. He wrote a uh, book many years ago, Gifts for the Marketplace. He said, I believe as much as anything than the gifts being used in the church service, they need to be used in our daily life out in the marketplace where we live. Amen. What does that mean? That means one day you're in the grocery store and there's a total stranger and God speaks to your heart and says, this is what's going on with them. This is the condition they've got. And you need to go over there and pray for them. Word of knowledge is coming. And then maybe when you go and you lay hands, you share that with them, and then all of a sudden the gift of faith comes. And you lay hands on the person or pray with the person, whatever is appropriate in the, the arena that you're in, but the gift of faith comes and the, God does the work that he sent you to that person. That's these gifts working in the marketplace. That's why God wants us to be a Pentecostal church, not just so we can get loose and have a good time, you know, and just have some good worship. You know, it used to be people say, well, you need to go down to that Pentecostal church. Man, they got the best music in town. And we used to. And then these other churches found out they could pay the best band member to come to their church. If they paid them enough on Sunday, they didn't have to be saved. They didn't have to be a part of the church. they come over and they built their worship team I know this happens because I've got some friends. I just about said sell their talent, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Lease it. <laughs> That's a better term, thank you. <laughs> but now, any church, especially around Nashville, and they've understood, they found out that if we want to draw the people, we need to step up in our worship. We need to step our music up. And so now you can go anywhere and have just as good a music as we used to be just a solitary into a Pentecostal church. So it's not going to be our music anymore. And there's even, you know, some of these Baptist churches are getting a little loose and, you know, they maybe don't run around the place, but they can just kind of, you know, get down, get down their feet a little bit. So what is it that makes us different? It's those gifts that God gives through the Holy Spirit. And the scripture says, and we'll just go real quick over here to uh, 1 Corinthians. Just to show you what they are, and then we'll come back to them later in another message. 1 Corinthians 12 
Verse 4 says, there are diversities of gifts with the same spirit. There are diversities of ministries with the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but in the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For the one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, another word of knowledge through the spirit, another faith uh, by the same spirit, gifts of healings, the same spirit, workings of miracles, prophecy, uh, discerning of spirits, and other different kinds of tongues, and another interpretation of tongues. All by the same Spirit. And when you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, you can be used in any one of the nine. Now, I think that for some people, God leans one gift and gives them a little more, and they operate in that gift more than others. But if there's ever a need, you can, if you're full of the Holy Ghost, can be used in any one of the gifts at any time. I remember a story that uh, John Hagee's daughter, Pastor John Hagee down in Texas, his daughter was battling cancer several years ago. And she was on her way to one of her appointments one day, and she was running a little bit early, so she stopped in a coffee shop and went in just to kind of collect herself. Across town, a lady getting ready for work, the Holy Ghost began to speak and said, I need you to go to this part of town. And it was the opposite direction of her work. He said, I need you to go over there and go to such and such coffee shop. And when you walk in, there's going to be a woman sitting by herself at such and such a table. She said, God, it will make me, it's the opposite way from work. I'm running late anyway. I'll be at least an hour late for work if I go. God says, you need to go to that coffee shop. She'll be sitting at such and such a table by herself. And you need to go in and tell her that everything's going to be all right. She got in her car. She drove across town. She parked. She went into that coffee shop. And looked at the table God said, and there sat a woman by herself, John Hagee's daughter. And she walked over and said, ma'am, you don't know me. I don't know you. But the Spirit of God sent me today across town, totally away from my work, to tell you whatever it is you're facing, everything's going to be all right. That's why we need to be a Pentecostal church. That's why we need to allow the Spirit of God to work through us through the gifts of the Spirit. Baptize means to immerse. Now, for water baptism, some of you not old enough to remember old Baptist preacher, comedian, Grady Nutt. He said, Baptize is the Greek word baptismo, which means hold them under until they bubble. <laughs> now, in, in the of water baptism, we are immersed, we are taken down into the water to where it covers us and we come up. Now, we understand that water baptism does not save us. It's an outward sign of the work that's already been done in our heart. The scripture talks about being baptized with the Holy Ghost. Well, we know that's an inside work. So what does that mean? It means that we then are full of the Holy Ghost. So then that evidence has to come from the inside out. And how does it do that? Initially, we're speaking in tongues. Well, Harry, I don't know. I don't understand that speaking in tongues. I've, you know, I get confused. And like I told you, that's just going to kind of be a quick overview of this. And hopefully we're going to spend a lot more time over the next several weeks. Because, folks, we need to get back. When, when we first started to come over here several years ago, Brother Bailey told me, he says, you guys need to go to Belshire because I know who you are, I know what you are. He says, and that church is probably the most Pentecostal church that we got within driving distance of your house. And that's where he, and I came and it was. But folks, we need to get back to what we were and move ahead from there. Speaking in tongues, people say, well, I don't understand how does that happen? What is it? 
is, is a language. And, and, you know, some people say, well, is the Holy Ghost just come in and take my tongue and just start shaking it around and make me start saying stuff? Uh, the most spiritual answer I can give you is no. That's not how it happens. When you were a baby and mom and daddy wanted you to start talking, depending on whichever one was doing the encouraging right then, you had two words they wanted you to learn. If it was daddy, he wanted you to say dada. If it was mama, she wanted you to say mama. And guess what? It took a while to get there. No baby was ever born. Not one ever, ever, out of the hundred zillion kind of people that have been born over all the years. Never one has a baby been born, laid up on a mama's chest and look up and say, Well, hi, mama. How you doing? I've been waiting to see you. I've been down there in that dark for nine months. That's never happened. That's never happened. There is a growth in, in how do we learn to talk whatever language. Jeannie says, I've got two languages I speak in. I speak a little bit of English and fluent mumble. <laughs> so, but whether you learn English or your language is Spanish or whatever it is, you learn by mom and daddy and those around you speaking and where do you hear it and perceive it? It comes in your ears and you hear it in your mind. I found that 99.9% .9 of the time when somebody is seeking to be filled with the Holy Ghost and expecting the gift of speaking in tongues as initial evidence, they will begin to hear this other language in their mind. That's where people will say, well, I'm afraid it's just me because they're hearing it in their mind and say, well, that's just me. I probably heard somebody else say something like that before. Well, you heard somebody say dada before. Is this making sense to anybody? And so that is the Holy Spirit using what is normal to you To begin to give that spirit because once he can get it to hear and we understand, okay, it is a language and I don't understand these words, but I understand it is some form of phrases together and, and so you begin to speak that. And people say, well, I, it just seems like stammering lips. Well, he said it would be. I didn't catch God off guard that you're not real fluent the first time you start praying in tongues. It's not a surprise to God. But if we begin to speak that, and the next thing you know, what we're hearing here, we begin to realize it's coming from here. It's not just us making up words up here. It's we've heard them here, and then once we get to that where it becomes more comfortable, and the more we do it, then we begin to understand, that's my spirit man. And so I always encourage people, say, if you're hearing it, say that. That's, an, that's just not you. It's God giving you a language in the way that you understand to get it. You know, it's just like when, when God wanted to speak to Samuel when he's a little boy. In the middle of the night, he heard his name Samuel. And what did it sound like to Samuel? It sounded like Eli's voice, the prophet that he was serving under. See, God knew... For him not to be just a total basket case, scared to death in the middle of the night, that the best way he could get Samuel to stop and listen is if it was a voice that was recognizable. So for God to get us to begin to move into the spirit realm, he has to do it at a level that we understand and are comfortable with. And now, I don't know why I'm going to do this, but, and I'll not ask for a show of hands, but if any of you ever, I, I never was a cusser. I kind of had, you know, the thing, I'd, I'd like to be able to tell you off, and you didn't realize you were told off and you were driving down the road. I mean, it's easy to use those 
telling you off words that everybody understands, you know, and they, they know you're telling them off. But I'd rather do it in a way that you just don't understand it until you're down. He, he just told me off. But, you know, I know people that were cussers. And even after they got saved, that was a hard thing to overcome. Isn't that right, David? Remember? <laughs> I can see him through the lights. Bigger. But a cusser, that becomes so natural to them as their everyday conversation that before they grow in the spirit to be able to learn to take control of that, that's just a natural thing. God wants us to get to the place, not that what we're doing is cussing, but God wants us to get to the place that our spiritual language is so natural to us. That when we get to a place of prayer, that's the thing that starts coming up out of our spirit. I've told you before, probably at least 75% of my praying time is I'm praying in the spirit. Why? Because I found out that a lot of times when I'm praying with this up here, I'm praying amidst. I'm praying what Harry wants. I'm praying the desire of what Harry wants to come out. But the scripture tells us when we pray in tongues, we are praying God prays through us. And how many know if God's praying, he's praying his will? So I'd a lot rather pray God's will towards situation because I know that's what he's wanting to do. Now, a lot of times what I'll be doing, I'll be praying, and um, maybe I might be praying for Chris. And I've prayed a couple of things that I, you know, know that on oh, my heart for Chris, you know, is that he gets, well, it starts to get some more business, but he's having to turn business away right now because he can't keep up with all of it. But some things that I know that are dear to his heart. And so I join with them in prayer and I can pray that here. And I can pray it in faith because, you know, we, we're brothers. And we, but then there might be some things that he's going through that I don't know about. And so as I begin to pray those things that I do know, then I let my spirit begin to take over. And then he starts praying for those things that he knows that Chris needs that I might not ever know. But God already knows, and so then he prays those things so they're taken to the Father as the will of God. So I encourage you. I encourage you. And I am encouraged. Boy, I, I got some stuff here I didn't preach. I am encouraged that I love the sins of God. I'm the sins of God on purpose. And I told our superintendent Doug Clay, when I first met him, and, and one of the first things I said to the pastor of this church was the first time we visited. I said, I want you to know I'm Pentecostal on purpose. Because I wasn't raised in Pentecost. Matter of fact, I was raised in one of those churches that teach what I believe today basically is of the devil. Or if it's not of the devil, God took it out of the church years ago and so it's not available today. Either way, they're wrong. And I was raised in that. And six months before I graduated from their Bible school, expecting my ministry to be in that church to a ripe old age, six months before I graduated, I went to a home Bible prayer meeting, and they were praying for folks to get filled with the Holy Ghost, and what they were getting seemed good to me, and so I sat in the chair and walked out and filled the Holy Ghost praying in tongues. Amazing how stuff gets, by the time I got, that was on Sunday, night, by the time I got back to school on Monday, those folks already knew how I don't know. And people that had been dear, or I thought friends, for three and a half years, suddenly wouldn't speak to me. Because I had what they thought was of the devil, or at least wasn't biblical. But friend, I found out. And so I told the pastor and I told him, I'm Pentecostal on purpose. I'm Pentecostal on purpose. I love Brother Jack Harper. said so when he got saved, he started studying the Bible. And he said what I told you earlier tonight. The first century church, the first church of the Bible church, the New Testament church, was a Pentecostal church. And he said, so that's what I want to be. He said, so I guess I need to be Pentecostal. And I need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And he got a pretty good dose of it, I think. So if you've never been, and 
I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, and I wish we had the whole church here today because I think we need to begin to hear this. Because I think from things I've heard and things I've observed, we have a big portion of membership in our church that's never been baptized in the Holy Ghost with evidence speaking in tongues. Not that you're any less worthy or any less saved or any less precious to God. But my heart is that you're missing out on one of the most precious gifts that God's ever given to a child of God. That's to fill us to overflowing with his spirit, to be our guide, to be our teacher, to be our strength, to be a power, and to be a source of ministry through us to others. Like I said before, not having a bad piece of the Holy Ghost won't keep you out of heaven. But there's a whole lot of fun stuff along the way that you miss. <laughs> I love being filled with the Holy Ghost. I do. I just, you know, well, you know, people get crazy. No, they were crazy before. <laughs> if you look back on them, the folks that you think are crazy, when they got the Holy Ghost, they were crazy before. Now they're just using this as a cover. <laughs> now I if we want to start sharing some notes I can, I've seen some stuff in my day and all of it was not of God <laughs> had a friend sitting at the piano in a sanctuary playing one morning after church and both folks just got to shouting and he's sitting there and looks and sees two legs come up in front of him like this and he keeps playing and looks and sees two legs come Somebody doing cartwheels across the front of the church. <laughs> now, do I think that's the Holy Ghost? No. But I also want to, I'll share this and I'm going to get done. I don't want to, I'm getting close here. Well, there's certain things, it's going to have to be the Holy Ghost. If you ever see me dance, it's going to have to be the Holy Ghost. Well, guess what? You'll never dance. Because the scripture never says that the Holy Ghost made them dance. The scripture said David danced before the Lord. I think it was Miriam and her maidens It said, and they danced before the Lord. They chose as a form of worship. Maybe you're a crier, and that becomes your worship. Fine, cry every tear that you can come up with. But do something to express the love and appreciation that you have for God giving you grace and life. You know, it, <clears throat> some people are runners, you know. That's fine. I'm more of a slow stroll guy. <laughs> my, my running days kind of behind me. <clears throat> I remember one time we were in church in, in Colorado. It was a pretty good-sized church. And, man, I was preaching. I was preaching good, Brother Ronnie. I mean, I was on that night. Me and the Holy Ghost, we had we, we were hooked up on that night. And, man, right in the middle of preaching, I laid the mic down and took off and ran around the perimeter of that church. And when I got back, I had to sit down. <laughs> I said, either I'm going to have to get in better shape or preach smaller churches. I can't, can't do that in these big churches anymore. <laughs> But what was it? Did the Holy Ghost make me do that? No, but I was so full and wanted to praise God that my physical body couldn't contain anymore. And so there had to be some, you know, some people are shouters, some people are laughers. Some people just get, you know, they get their amen on. Somebody say, well, they just in the flesh. Yeah. Be kind of spooky if they weren't. <laughs> Everything you do, you do in the flesh. The key is, who is your flesh giving glory to when it does what it does? I don't know if they're doing it this year or not, but these wider girls are fantastic softball players. 
And I've been to some of their softball games. And their daddy gets crazy. <laughs> Doesn't he, Sonia? But so do you, so don't. <laughs> <laughs> but see, nobody sits around and says, well, you know, look at those wildies over there. They just in the flesh. They're excited about their baby girls doing good. It's something they love. And so they express it. You know, I would, I would a whole lot rather being concerned about something going to the excess. You know, those statements that I'm not afraid of excess fire because there's enough wet blankets around to put it out in most churches. I'm a lot more afraid of a church that will allow, whether it be leadership or wherever it comes in, to squash the movement of the Spirit and not allow the Spirit of God to have free reign in our services and allowing the gifts that God's given to the church for ministry not to be used. I'm a whole lot more afraid of that kind of church. You can always take somebody aside and say, listen, I know you love God. And I know that you're just trying to find a way to express that love. But what you're doing is really kind of, it's disruptive, and we need to tone it down a little bit. And I think that's a whole lot easier than to go up to somebody and say, do we need to bury you next week? <laughs> <'Cause> you, <laughs> I'm going to take a pulse here before we go. You know, just, I'd a lot rather have the other problem to try to take care of. Brother Chris, I'm sure you've been there. I've been there and I've had to preach to that church. The hardest thing in the world for a Pentecostal preacher to try to do is preach when folks are just sitting there and sitting on this movement of the Spirit and not allowing God to have free reign. The thing that sets us apart as a Pentecostal church, or should set us apart. One's when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we're going to have the evidence speaking in tongues. And then on a regular basis in our church services and in our life, those gifts will operate in and through us as the Spirit of God sees fit. And the next thing that sets us apart is that when we come in, we might not always say it out loud, but our spirit man says, Holy Spirit, fill this room and change the atmosphere. I know some folks don't like you use phrase change the atmosphere in here. Well, listen, the atmosphere has to change. The atmosphere has to change. How many know that in this area this afternoon, the atmosphere changed? And we went from almost 90 degrees to a little above 80 in just a few minutes. And rain came. And that rain never would have happened if something hadn't happened in the atmosphere. Amen. And sometimes we come into the atmosphere and it's dry. And there's nothing stirring. And we need something. We need the Holy Ghost to come in. And do something that changes the atmosphere. Amen. And that's where Pentecostals, that's where we come in and say, God, not to, that I wasted my time, but if I got up and I got stuff to ready and I got here, then I want something when I leave here that I'll know that I've been in the presence of God. I pray a lot of times. And I prayed it this week for something that I was needing from God. I said, God, I want a tangible presence. See, it's one thing we know that God's always here. Because he can't be anywhere else because he's everywhere. So we know he's always here. But we can come and go and never sense that presence. But as we begin to worship him and open ourselves up to the food, freedom of his movement, I say, God, give us a tangible, something that we leave, we can say, I know that I know. 
when I was sitting on my back porch yesterday morning, I was praying, and I don't normally just sitting in the middle of the prayer, just take off and just openly weep like I did yesterday morning, Brother Ronnie. But there was a tangible presence of the Spirit of God on that back porch. And because of that, my spirit man leaked out through this physical man <laughs> in tears. Well, Father God, thank you. Thank you, God. Lord, we pray that across this internet, through the Facebook, the people tonight that were watching or will watch it later on in, in the archives, God, that, that Holy Spirit invade those homes wherever they watch. That you're not limited to just being in this room or here physically. We thank you that you were here and we pray that the, the word went forth and I'd encourage somebody. Maybe they haven't spoken in their heavenly language in a while. They begin to pray in tongues in their heavenly language on a daily basis. Maybe there's some here that they've never moved into that next gift of the Spirit. God, that they begin to, to explore and study and seek you. And Lord, we want most of all God to be glorified in our life. Take this word tonight, Holy Spirit, embed it into our spirit that we want to desire and will seek to be more like you and to have more of you. Lord, we can never have all of you, but I want more of you. I can't contain all of you, but I want to contain every bit that you can give me. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. One quick thing God showed me today, our physical man, we can't put so much in. I mean, there comes a time we get up and walk away from the table, it ain't one more bite going in right then. But the one good thing about our spirit man, it can't never get full. It can't never get full. Thank you for putting up with me tonight. God bless you. Have a great night.